From Hollywood, California, we bring you a new Dr. Christian drama called Chicken Supreme, starring Gene Hersholt as the popular Dr. Christian, presented for your pleasure by the Cheesebro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline, and producers of Vaseline Petroleum Jelly, Vaseline Hair Tonic, and other famous Vaseline specialties. Now, before the curtain overture, we ask you to listen to what this experienced mother and housewife has to say. When you're running your own home and raising three energetic children, too, it seems as if there were always some emergency to interrupt your routine. My little boys are always getting cuts or scratches, or if it isn't that, it's a burn or a scrape or some kind of minor skin irritation. And that's when my emergency shelf comes into action. Out comes a jar of Vaseline jelly, and things are fixed up in no time. Vaseline jelly is so soothing and healing, so easy and so safe to use, that I just wouldn't know how to get along without it. In our house, for every sort of minor skin injury or irritation, we rely on dependable Vaseline jelly. Well, very few people in this country do get along without it. For Vaseline jelly is found in more than nine out of every ten homes. Vaseline jelly is so popular because it's so effective and so economical. Only ten cents for a generous jar or tube. Be sure you have a supply on hand so that you're always ready to deal promptly with everyday emergencies. Ask your druggist, too, about the Vaseline specialties including Vaseline borated jelly, Vaseline carbolated jelly, Vaseline camphor ice, and Vaseline lip ice. And remember when you buy to look for the trademark Vaseline on every jar or tube. That trademark is your guarantee of absolute purity. There's the curtain music and the show is about to begin. Starred in the comedy Chicken Supreme is Jean Hersholt as Dr. Christian, supported by Rosemary DeCamp in the role of Judy Price, John Barry as the Reverend Horner, Jane Morgan as Matilda Tweedle, Verna Felton as Lottie Tweedle, and David Kerman as Joe Gunther. The opening scene shows Dr. Christian staggering up his own front walk, bearing a crate in which Ella, violently indignant, is housed. All right, old girl, all right. Bye now. I don't know what I'm going to do with you, but here we are. Oh, hello, Doctor. Good heavens, what have you there? <laughs> what does it sound like? A chicken. Yeah, it's Mr. McDuncan's idea of a dollar's worth of medical attention. Did you let that old Scotchman pay you off with a chicken you don't want? Well, it's about all he can afford. Ah. Any telephone calls? No, nothing important. Oh, but the Reverend Horner's waiting in your office. He's been here almost an hour. Reverend Horner? Yes. Here, let me take that antiquated fowl. I thought I'd put it out in the back hole. All right. Well, well, good afternoon, Reverend Horner. Hello, Doctor. You're a hard man to catch. Mm, sit down, Reverend. Uh, just put that uh, crate in the corner, will you, Judy? I'll attend to it. Quiet, you barnyard octogenarian. <laughs> well, well, quite a bird. Looks very much like a donation. Correct. From the canny Mr. McDuncan. Well, you couldn't use it, could you, Reverend? No, thanks. I had one of McDuncan's hens once. A very muscular bird. <laughs> uh, well, I'll run along now. Excuse me, Reverend. Oh, don't go, Judy. We may need your advice. I am here for the Ladies' Aid Society. Oh, well, uh, how much did the need, Reverend? No, 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 I'm not soliciting funds. It's this way, Doctor. The lady of the church has presented me with a, a problem, and I'm going to pass the buck to you. Mm -hmm. Sounds bad. Hey, please, gently. It's the Twinkle Sisters. The ladies have decided to give a bridge banner for them. A banner? Well, they can't take that. They've already done it. Good heavens, that's terrible. And it's responsible for several of our gray hairs. As you know, Colonel Tweedle gave the money to build our church, which makes the situation decidedly embarrassing. Do you should say so? Unfortunately, the ladies' aid sometimes has more energy than tact. Now, I know that the Tweedles are on a verge of dire want, so they arrange this party, the national 50 cents worth of canned goods. Not a lot of idea, I'm afraid. When our president, Mrs. Hall, called in with the committee of three to present the candidates, the ladies are practically ordered out of the house. Good, it turns them right. I'm well, surprised it does, but Mrs. Hall and her committee became highly indignant and have now placed an order for the job of forcing those candidates down the throats of the candidates. <laughs> 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 okay, 
have to stop them and put a particular tweet or kind of bug. I know you'd find a way. Oh, not so fast. I don't suppose the tweet is where everyone will have to stay in their lives and I don't have any slightest idea how I'll make the tweet right there. Well, that won't be really hard. Maybe they'll be still in time to stop their credit. Yes, I know. Well, I've got to go on now. Good luck. Bye. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Goodbye, Robin. Goodbye, Judy. Bye, Doctor. Doctor, you're an incurable softy. Well, I suppose I am, but... Well, I've, I've got to do something about those two unfortunate women. The father was a fine man. He was my friend. <laughs> oh, that poor hen. Aww. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> I wonder if I could get the twinkies, too. Hmm? Yes, I think I could. Come on, Judy. We are going to call him Matilda and Lottie. You and I and the Falcon's hen. What about that feathered chatterbox? No, I don't have a for the present. Oh, it's a shame. This house that was once so lovely, falling to pieces. The long ever grown with weeds. Yeah, the only thing the two sisters keep up now is the flower garden in the back. Hmm. You're not serious, are you, about trying to give that hand to the Tweedles? Of course. The back is... Huh? Don't turn around. The Tweedles are peeking at us from the bay window. <laughs> what if they won't let us in? Oh, they will. But that chicken, Doctor, what good will it do? I hear steps. Oh, what a surprise. It's Dr. Christian. Come in, Doctor. Hello, Matilda. How are you, Lottie? As well as could be expected. No thanks to you, however. You haven't stopped in for three weeks. Well, has it been that long? Well, I'm awfully sorry. And may I present my secretary, Miss Judy Price? So you're Judy. Yes, I'm so glad to know you. Doctor, you never told us she was pretty. She ought to be married. You said a slow day for a living. No? <laughs> I'll tell you about myself. Your name's Price, is it? Uh, yes, that's right. Any relation to the Prices from Philadelphia? I don't think so, no. Good. Never liked them. Social climbers. Uh, won't you come in for a while, Doctor? At least close the door or we'll catch our death of cold. Oh, excuse me. Never saw a man yet who didn't leave the doors or the windows open. This way, Miss Price. Thank you. And will you have a cup of tea? I don't think we have time for tea. Well, uh, come take a minute. I, I had the cook fix it right away. Oh, good land, what am I talking about? We need to let the cook and the parlor maid go. Servants are such a problem these days, don't you think? Yes, I suppose they are. Sit down on the sofa, Miss Price. You can use the big chair, Doctor. Thank you. Don't sit on that end, Miss Price. Uh -huh. Things are broken. And uh, it's all right on this end. Thanks. Please excuse the appearance of things. We're buying new furniture next week, you know. We've been putting it off so long. It's hard to part with the old things. These old pieces are lovely. That's what I tell Lottie. I'd rather have things reupholstered. Spend a little more and get new things, I say. Lottie's right, I suppose. Though, of course, with me, it's sentiment rather than expense. Oh, I think I know just how you feel, Miss Tweedle. Well, Doctor, what's wrong with you? Cat got your tongue? No. Hmm? <laughs> Not at all. I'm, I'm just lost my mind. Usually talks your arm off. Maybe while you're here, you ought to take Lottie's pulse, Doctor. Feeling well, Lottie? She's got insomnia. Matilda's got it too. That's where I caught it. Hmm. Well, did not know. Boy, that man. Are you getting plenty of iron and vitamins? Iron and vitamins. Stop the nonsense. No appetites. But we are not heavy eaters, especially of late. Just uh, jelly and toast is all we care about for breakfast. A little soup for lunch. Mm, what about dinner? Oh, anything we have around the house. Hmm. I see. Well, um. Stop mumbling. <laughs> Sorry, my dear, I was just talking. I... You know, perhaps you ought to fix a nice stand for dinner. That's not too heavy. Yet it has plenty of nourishment. I'm sure Lottie would like that. There's nothing wrong with me. It's you who's prescribing for her. I'm prescribing for both of you. And it just happens that I have a fine fat hand out of my car. Now, it's a good idea. Could I take your hand, Doctor? They're not charity patients, you know. Oh, of course not. I'll order a hand from the market. Oh, that be not I'm afraid. Can't get a bread like this one, can I? Why not? Well, it's been fed on a special diet. Uh, uh, how are you in that content? There's that iron vitamin nonsense again. Now, don't argue with the doctor, Lottie. Well, I'm not going to the bomb. Uh, it'll give me a tender, not a good. Well, if you're prescribing for Matilda, you need it more than I do. But, of course, we'll pay you for it.
right, Doctor. Oh, of course. Just uh, put it on our bill, Doctor. Very well. Uh, don't forget. All right, all right. Now, I'll order that, Judy, will you? Yes, Doctor. One R and a vitamin M. Fifty cents. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, uh, I guess we should be going. We have a lot of call to make before supper. And uh, by the way, ladies, uh, if uh, that chicken seems to be top dead, mind uh, it's still an uh, iron in its system. Yes, Judy. The Tweedle sisters are here, and they seem all excited. 
excited and upset about telling you. Oh, right. to come in. All right. Come right in, ladies. Oh, good morning, Matilda. Good morning, Doctor. I wonder if I catch my breath. How are you, Lottie? Not good, but I'll live. Oh, sit down. I don't believe you've ever called in my office before. We had to see it right away, Doctor. We need your help. It's been going on for three days now. What's been going on? We've been trying to kill Ella. What? Well, who's Ella? The hen you left with us. That's the name we gave her. Oh, I see. But we just can't kill her, Doctor. We tried to chop her head off. And we tried to shoot her. Trouble is, we've gotten fond of Ella. And she's fond of us, too. She eats right out of her hand. Oh, but look here, ladies. You were supposed to do the eating. We know, Doctor. That's why we're here. Of course, if you'd rather, you can keep her with the eggs. Oh, no, we can't keep her. She ruined half our flowers. Why, this morning she dug up 11 tulip bulbs. We can't seem to keep her locked up. She gets out of every coop we made. She flies over, crawls through, or digs under. Mm. Why don't you get your neighbor, Mr. Garvey, to kill the hen oh, for oh, you? Oh, you don't understand, Doctor. We want you to do it. Why me? Well, we were hoping that you would chloroform her first so it would be painless. Oh, no, I couldn't do that, but... Wait a minute, I've got an idea how to keep Ella quiet. So you mean so she'll stay in her coop and keep out of the flowers? Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Oh, in that case, we keep her. We're sort of attached to her, you know. Now, listen. You go down to Jimmy Ruckers at number six, River Road. Ask him to get a set of eggs for Ella to hatch. Oh, I just love to raise some baby chicks, but are they expensive? No, no, no. You see, uh, Jim Ruckers was a friend of your father. He charged it to your account. Very many times. Oh, well, in that case... What do you think, Lottie? Baby chips. <laughs> Silly idea. But if it amuses you, Matilda, we'll get them. What's the date today, Judy? August 14th. Mm, how time flies. I know it's three months since that last call I made on Alec McDuncan. Hey, Doctor, you should have turned there. We have to go to the hospital. Yeah, I know, but uh, the only blog is open to Tweedle Place, so I thought I'd drop in and... And uh, see how the chicks are getting along, huh? Well, I hadn't thought about it, but why not? You certainly started something with Ella. <laughs> well, what's so terrible about it, Judy? Why, those two sisters haven't had a minute's peace since those 11 baby chicks hatched out. Well, at least they use that account of milk and stores where they've been eating regularly. But they've been buying as much for those chickens as they have for themselves. Oh, nonsense. A couple of bags of corn. That's what you think. Ordinary corn isn't good enough for those chickens. No. Oh, they've got to have special iron and vitamin feed. Never one of them has a name. You <laughs> think those chickens are babies. Why, the tweeters hardly get time to sleep. It's not that bad, I guess. You don't know the half of it. They've got books and government pamphlets on raising chickens, and they've read them from cover to cover. <laughs> they feed and water those chickens exactly on schedule, rain or shine. But they even get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to feed them. <laughs> chickens do like the breakfast early. Yeah, they spent money on a chicken run. They've even given up their flowers because they haven't time for them. Yes, I noticed that. But, uh, I mean... Huh? What's that? Have you been calling on the tweedles and not telling me about it? Well, uh, oh, now and then. Hmm. What does now and then mean? Oh, maybe once a week. So that's it. You're up to something. Now, what is it? Haven't you noticed the change in the tweedles? Hmm? They're interested in something. They've become a human. They're, they're actually blossoming out. Well, yes, now that you mention it, I, ha I have noticed it. But they're heading for the poorhouse just as fast as ever. I wonder. It seems to me that tough old bird Ella may have changed a lot of things for the tweedles. Well, there we are. Oh, there they are, the chicken pen. Hello, Doctor. Hello, Judy. Hello, Miss Tweedle. Who's that man in there with him? That's Joe Gunther. Who's he? Oh, just a chap I asked to drop around and see the Tweedle's birds. Dr. Christian, what have you got up your sleeve? Now, don't ask any questions. We'll find out soon enough. Hi, Doctor. Hello, Joe. Well... What do you think of those chickens? Mm, as fine as I ever saw. Huh? You hear that, Doctor? And Mr. Gunther says he's been all over the state. Mm, chickens are his business, so if he likes your birds, you can be mighty proud of them. He likes them so well, he wants to buy them. Mm, I knew those chickens were dainty chickens. But of course, we're not selling them. Mercy, though. We couldn't talk to them now. Not after we raised them ourselves all the way from the egg. But, Miss Matilda, wouldn't you like to make a little money out of your chickens? Money isn't everything, Judy. I should say not. The finer sensibilities count, too. I offer the lady three cents over the market, though. Look here, Matilda. You too, Lottie. You like raising chickens, don't you? Oh, yes. It's been wonderful seeing the little things develop. And there's a lot of science to this, Doctor, that you wouldn't know about. I dare say. Well, then, why don't you keep on raising chickens? What do you mean, Doctor? I mean, take the money down here 
and give you for your present crop of chicks and start a new one. Then you will have to find a reason to marry back again. Oh, Lottie, do you really think you could? Well, of course you could. And just think, maybe you could start two settings this time and four settings next time. Yes, and, and pretty soon you'll have a business. That's all you know about it, Doctor. Matilda and I have been reading up on chicken farming, and it would take capital to build proper houses and runs and buy incubators and feed. Yes, and that's what you can't to come in. If you sisters can raise double your present flock and produce the same kind of results, Joe here will arrange to help you in your future financing. Isn't that so, Joe? Why, Doctor? Hmm. Okay, Mr. Gunther, it's a deal. Well, isn't that fine? Congratulations, Matilda and Dodger, on your new business venture. Congratulations and success. Thank you, Dr. Christian. Thank you for everything. Matilda and I owe you a mighty big debt, Doctor. Ah, oh, nonsense. All I did was give you a chicken and give it the rest. But we insist on repaying your kindness. Miss Price, you know the doctor's case. What kind of a present would you suggest? Well, let me see. Well, why not give me one of your fine chickens? Why, of course. We'll give you the finest bird in our flock, Dr. Christian. Come, Matilda. We'll get Ella for the doctor right now. Ella. Oh, oh no, lady, please. Oh, honestly, Doctor, I had no idea they'd part with Ella. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess there's another truth in that old adage. Chickens always come home to roost. <laughs> <laughs> the chicken supreme which Dr. Christian has served up to us this evening. Gene Herschel, starred in the title role of these stories, both on the air and on the screen, will be here in a moment to tell you about next week's play. Meanwhile, if the spring weather and the new spring hats cause the ladies' thoughts to turn to a new permanent wave, here's a tip. Start now to condition your hair for that permanent. Start now to give your scalp regular Vaseline hair tonic treatments. These Vaseline hair tonic treatments are important because they help to check any tendency to dryness loose dandruff scales, or excessive falling hair that even normally healthy scalps seem to experience at this time of year. Here's the easy routine. Once a week, rub plenty of Vaseline hair tonic on your scalp. Then run the towel out of steaming hot water and wrap it around your head. When the towel cools a bit, repeat the process. Then give yourself a regular shampoo. You'll be delighted with the new softness and sheen of your hair. Delighted, too, to discover that it will take a more natural-looking, flattering permanent. Vaseline hair tonic is economical, too. There's enough in one 40-cent bottle for several treatments. And the 70-cent size is even more economical. Get a bottle of Vaseline hair tonic at the nearest drugstore and see how much more attractive your hair can be. And now, here comes Jean Herschel, the popular Dr. Christian of Rivers End. <laughs> Dr. Christian, what have you chosen for us for next week? And next week, we're going to do a play called Glamour. It's the story of a little girl whose mother found her out to a middle-aged couple near River's End. And 13 years later, the mother returned to claim the daughter. Well, you'll hear the whole story next week. So until Wednesday evening at this same hour, I'll say good night. <laughs> The second in a series of actor pictures based on this radio program has just been completed. It's called The Courageous Dr. Christian, and Jean Herschel has starred in the title role. Be sure to watch for the release date at your local theatre. This is Arthur Gilmore, and a good night for the makers of Vaseline Corporations. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.